Good to see you, dear viewers, and welcome to a new episode of the Culture of Flavors, Ramadan edition. I'm your host, Dr. Mohamed al -Gatlan. And hi, I'm Lucy. I'm your co-host today on Cultural Flavors, Ramadan edition. And thank you so much for having me. We are so glad to have you, Lucy. So how is the Ramadan treating you so far? Alhamdulillah, it's been great so far. What about for yourself? Actually, it's really good. And I am really glad that I could have the time to really visit my family as well as to visit my friends. I think that's one of the best things about Ramadan is that you really get a chance to socialize. And of course, if you can't visit someone, we can call them, drop them a message, a voice note. This is very interesting. We have to take this advice. So Lucy, which country will we be talking about today? Oh, we have a really exciting country today because we're talking about one of our neighboring countries, which mm -hmm. is the Republic of Yemen. Have you been there? I haven't yet, but inshallah, I will go one day. I have not been there and I think a lot of people would like to visit because this has a really long history in a lot of touristic places. And we're going to talk about the holy month of Ramadan in the Republic of Yemen. And we're also going to be welcoming a guest from Yemen today. And I'm really looking forward to finding out more about what she has to say about her culture and, culture and especially her food. Perfect. So dear viewers, let's go watch this report together and we will be back. So please don't go away. Yemen is a captivating destination in the southwestern part of the Arabian Peninsula, known for its rich cultural heritage, unique cuisine, and breathtaking natural landscapes. Yemen is home to charming cities, of which most important are Sana'a, famed for its traditional stone houses and an old cityscape that's like stepping back in time, Aden, known for its beautiful beaches and historic port, Taz, characterized by historic homes and narrow streets, and many more. Arabic is the official language in Yemen, and Islam plays a significant role in shaping the culture and daily life of the people. Traditional clothing is still widely worn. Traditions remain deeply rooted in Yemeni culture, and Ramadan celebrations are no exception. It is a time to celebrate and eat nice food with family and friends. Iftar rituals in Yemen's cities are truly special. For many Yemenis, the flavor of Ramadan is most distinct on dining tables as it reveals their heritage and the various unique customs of their ancestors. Just before the evening call to prayer, mosques are transformed into public meeting places where Yemenis gather within designated and specially prepared areas to set out their iftar meals. Visitors and strangers alike are invited to join. In villages, households often send food to the local mosques to be distributed among strangers and the less privileged. And welcome back to Cultural Flavors, our Ramadan edition. Today we have a very special guest with us. We have Mrs. Amal Albid, and she's from the Republic of Yemen. Hi, Amal. Welcome to the show. Thank you for hosting me. We are so glad to have you, Amal, talking about a really unique and interesting topic, which is the holy month of Ramadan in the Republic of Yemen. Looking forward to the discussion. Mm -hmm. So we'd love to know a little bit more about yourself. So please, we'll let you take the floor. Uh, so my name is Amal Albid and uh, I've been born and grew up in Yemen. I moved between different governorates, uh, central, south and north. Uh, I come from a legal and gender background. Um, I started working with UNICR around 14 years ago. I worked in Yemen, uh, I worked in Jordan briefly and I also worked in, uh, in emergencies where we had uh, refugee, refugee influxes between Burundi and Rwanda. So I served at the borders receiving them. And then I was based on Rwanda for four years. And then finally, I moved to Kuwait two years ago. Wow. I'm also a mother of two. Uh, and I'm very lucky to get the support of fa my family and my spouse 
they are behind all of the uh, success I have. We are glad to have you, Emil. Actually, I have not been to Yemen, unfortunately, and I would love to visit this country at some point. Why is Yemen is so unique? Well, since I'm Yemeni, I find so many good things uh, in Yemen, uh, but uh, for good reasons as well. Uh, Yemen is also among the oldest and ancient uh, civilization in the uh, in the region. Correct. Uh, the location of the country as well. Uh, it view it's it has a, a view over uh, two of the important seas. Um, it has uh, one of the most important traits. But Manda, I'm sure you're following the news. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, we have um, very particular uh, architecture. Uh, we have uh, some of the uh, historical and tourist destinations, for example, like the Sin, the Sant uh, Temple of Sheba. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the old city of Sana'a. We have uh, Squatra Island as well. Um, and we have uh, Shibam, um, what is it, like the skyscrapers, and they're saying this is among the oldest. Uh, Dar Hajar, which is the house of stone. Interesting. So too many uh, historical places to, to mention. Uh, and also, uh, it's important to note that we, the people there are very kind and hospitable. Uh, they like to, uh, they like to uh, interact and socialize with different cultures. They're very open to that, uh, and very interesting and nice cuisine as well. Correct. Quite different. Mm -hmm. So you've already told us a little bit about what is famous from Yemen. Uh, can you tell us a little bit, because you grew up there, what do you feel not many people know about Yemen but maybe should be famous for? Well, um, I think there is a lot that's not uh, discovered uh, about it. For instance, um, since uh, tourism has not been as before um, and uh, the recent uh, events and the war, there is so many things has been destroyed. Mm. Uh, but then uh, it's also always important to, to remember that uh, at some point Yemen had a very good culture and very important things to export. Uh, for example, like the agriculture, uh, not so many people know that we have uh, the coffee bean. Correct. Uh, we have over 40 uh, types of uh, grapes. Nice. Uh, we have very kind of like um, quality fruits of, for example, like mango, um, uh, watermelon, I see sometimes, uh, pomegranate, I see them sometimes in the market, Correct. but they're not I... as supposed to be. Uh, also really, the they're really delicious though. Yeah, yeah, because they are um, organic. Yeah. We, we don't really... So, so I, mean, I would add something that I really like in Yemen, which is the honey. Yeah. Honey is really popular in Yemen, so I don't know if you have tried the Tulsi, but it's really good quality. Indeed, yes. Mm -hmm. And they do come from uh, my, area, my area of origin, uh, but there is also other types of honey uh, now from uh, a place called Asaini. Yes. yes, and that's also <laughs> very, very uh, delicious. So we would like to talk about now more specific toward the holy month of Ramadan. I would like to know about what people usually do before or as a preparation for the holy month of Ramadan in Yemen. So preparation goes sometimes months ahead before the uh, the month starts. For instance, uh, women do start preparing the dough uh, for baking samosa. Mm -hmm. uh, they also start looking for, for example, we have a very uh, traditional soup uh, that's made of wheat, and it takes a little bit of preparations for it to be ready. We have uh, one also type of um, appetizers that we serve on the on the table that's called bagya and also it requires some works ahead. Uh, and when the month starts to approach, then uh, there is a very uh, interesting ritual. It's called uh, what the self craves. Mm -hmm. uh, it has different names uh, around the uh, Arab countries, but it's basically um, a, 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 a feast where people come together and then bring whatever they crave before Ramadan, before the fasting. Uh -huh. And when Ramadan is announced, then um, uh, usually uh, children start with the fireworks. So, you know, like Ramadan is, is the next day. Exactly. It's and co then... Uh, Ramadan's coming. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> strong, strong statement. <laughs> and then, for example, in Adan, we have uh, children going around with the container, middle containers filled of small stones so when they move around then you hear all of this noise so you know that's uh, also uh, an introduction uh, for the month 
And in the old city of Sana'a, uh, you see, uh, you know, kids moving uh, in a group uh, with lanterns around the city, singing certain songs, traditional ones, and then finally end up in a location where they play certain games and then um, then go home. This is interesting. Do people still do that, or the newer generation is actually not as much as the older generation? Well, it's it's. Uh, I think when uh, with the urbanization started to get less and less, uh, people certainly in certain locations still keep the same right. flavor right. for the for for the holy month. For example, in the old city, you can still find many rituals still in practice but when you go to for example the new areas urban areas then you find this is getting less, less and less as before God. so I, I have a question i think leading perfectly from what you just said which is during the month of ramadan how do your lives change mm. upside down <laughs> <laughs> so what usually is done in the day then it, it moves to to the night uh, empty life during the day mm starts a little bit uh, in the afternoon um, where people start you know to go and get what's needed for the iftar and then super busy at night uh, i think similar i've seen it also happening the same in, in kuwait Correct. Uh, but uh, but yeah i mean for a good reason we know like people get energetic after having food but also most of the you know like prayers tarawih prayers most of the visits social life starts all after uh, after uh, sunset very interesting. Let's move on to cuisine. I would like to know, are there any particular meals that you have in Yemen uh, is different from the rest of the year? Um, well, many of these uh, uh, plates are actually served throughout the year, okay. but sometimes we do reserve some and focus on them, on certain types of food to be uh, served uh, on the table of Ramadan. For instance, have you heard about your food? No, I'm, I'm not. Nope. I'm not. <laughs> so this is, for example, in, in, in almost every house. Uh, where, so it's, so what, um, is, what is that? So what's contained? So it's uh, a type of bread that we have. It's called lahouh. Okay. Uh, it looks like the injera a little bit. Okay. Uh, the Ethiopian injera. And then uh, it basically swims in a liquid made of yogurt, leek, um, onion, and garlic. It's very cold, and then uh, af after when you, you start breaking your your ifta, your, your, your fast, mm -hmm. your fasting, then it's very um, moisturizing. You know. Okay. All right. Uh, we also have a variety of uh, juice. For example, we have raisin juice, uh, roselle, uh, uh, tamarind, mm -hmm. um, barley. Um, and also the traditional, we have some busa, of course, and yeah. what I mentioned, like the bagya, which is similar, which is made of beans. Um, and then we have the main dish, which is usually like either rice and meat, like mm -hmm. zurbian, uh, which is which can which can be compared to a biryani. Okay. Uh, we have saltan fahsa. Have you heard about this? No, <laughs> but they sound really good. Everything sounds so good. <laughs> this uh, is why I told you I would like to visit him and I would try. To, I would like to try all this cuisine. But Emma, oh. talking about meals, we're going to talk more about it. But in every episode, my colleague, and I'm really glad that we have today, Lucy, she's going to prepare a, a specific dish which should be related to Yemen. So what do you have for us, Lucy, today? So today I'm going to be making feta bil laban. How was my pronunciation? Good? <laughs> Perfect. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a second. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to talk about how I came across the recipe first, which is actually from a Yemeni chef. I followed him for a very long time. All right. And it really opened my eyes to just how many dishes I hadn't heard of. All right. And uh, for today's show, I want to do something sweet. Uh, so it is a breakfast dish, I believe. Um, it's got, uh, uh, we have fresh milk. We also have evaporated milk some uh, spices. I'm doing a little twist. I'm not doing the traditional cardamom. I'm okay. going to do some cinnamon, uh, some sugar, the bread, which is the main component of the dish. Mm -hmm. And I always add a little touch of uh, salt to any of my desserts to bring out the flavors without needing to add more and more sugar. Okay. So that's what I'm going to be making today. Awesome. And you're going to have the chance to try it. Mm -hmm. And also probably you could wait what, Ima, what Lucy's going to do. Okay. So dear viewers, we have a break and I continue. So please don't go away.
and welcome back to Cultural Flavors, Ramadan edition. Today I'm going to be making a dish from the Republic of Yemen. I'm going to be making feta bil leban. So now I'm going to show you some very simple steps. I have here a saucepan and I'm going to start by putting my ghee into the saucepan and adding a little bit of cinnamon powder and a touch of salt. I'm going to turn this on a low heat and I'm just going to let the ghee melt and then the cinnamon is going to start releasing its aromatics and its flavors into the ghee before I move on to the next steps. So while that's just starting to warm up, I have a question for Amal. So today you're wearing a beautiful dress from Yemen. Can you tell us a little bit about the tradition behind it, maybe the name that you have for it and uh, we'd love to hear more. So this is the traditional uh, sitara that's worn in uh, mostly in Sana'a and the areas around it. And usually women wear it when they go out. Um, they cover, uh, it's covered, covering the head until the toes. And they usually do it whenever they have some um, things to run outside of the houses. Once they, mo it's, it's easy to put and remove. Mm -hmm. And these are one of the new designs for the sitara. This is really interesting. So, Amel, what about, uh, are there any places that people go or gather in, in, the, in, the, in the Republic of Yemen during the holy month of Ramadan? Uh, Ramadan is a good opportunity to, to strengthen the social ties. Uh, and that's why some people do prefer to, for example, enhance their relationships, visits to family members and friends. And that's why you see a lot of families, they come together uh, they go and spend time with each other. Friends also we have, it's similar phenomenon like the Diwaniyas in here, but in Yemen it's kind of like more uh, uh, disaggregated between ma males and females. And people do go there to stay and spend some time, socialize, uh, eat uh, sometimes the dinner together, mm -hmm. and then they come back. And there are some people who do prefer to stay at home uh, because Ramadan can be a very, you know, like busy, time exactly. for people when they go especially out of, outside of the house crowd and traffic and so many people do prefer to stay at home and focus on worshiping and there's some people also who do focus completely on on worshiping especially in the last 10 days of ramadan the hajjud <laughs> where they where they spend their time at the at the mosque which is a good opportunity that people could do during the early month of exactly. ramadan yeah so i mean what about uh, any tradition and clothing for for men uh, so Yemen is a big country and we have a diverse culture uh, and men do wear differently depending on where they come from. Okay. So for so example, it depends on the region. in the southern region, uh, people would wear, um, we call it mawaz, which, which means like they, they take, you know, this piece and they tie it around the waist. Correct. It looks like a skirt. Yeah. But uh, more masculine, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in the north they wear the uh, dishdasha, the we call it top dress, yeah. the white dress, and they put the jambia okay. with the with the belt uh, on it. Correct. Um, and then people and and uh, people in the south and the central parts of Yemen have different colors uh, of the of the mawas. So depending where they come from, you will see the colors. Um, refer to that location. For example, in Hadramut, people wear um, flashy and uh, colorful mouths, for example, like in green, in pinkish, in, in reddish, bluish. And you see like the colors are kind of, you know, like very, uh, very light lighting. But while in, in other area, areas, like for example, in Adan and the southern other parts near Adan, you will see more of a darker colors. All right, it's interesting. Yeah, I had no idea that you had all the exactly. kind of, I, I've seen the traditional dress, mm -hmm. but I didn't know that from different regions that there was different, different. Uh, styles. And I think like in Kuwait, it's a, a small country, so it's very across the board, like the men's dress. Yeah. Um, and I, I believe you were referring to the the decorative knife that's often mm. kept, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, can you tell us a little bit more about that item? Because is it something that's used on a practical level or is it something that's more of a Decoration. Well, it's the daily uh, wear for men uh, in the north. Can you tell the difference between them, or you think it's the same uh, dagger? Yeah, I, I, I honestly, I assumed I it yeah. was uh, just one style, but maybe just different details. Exactly. But and so no way. I, I but wouldn't you know, know, like the social status of the person it depends on the type of uh, belt and dagger they will wear. 
and it can get as expensive as you know like uh, 10,000 USD wow uh, so depending what you do uh, how wealthy you are then you can reflect it in the way you wear uh, and the type of uh, jambia you put this is really interesting mm. so Amel what about let's move to the to the Eid with other preparation that people do for Eid that's such a unique and specific and very important day um, uh, I think Eid is the, uh, the, the the thing that I remember the most when I was a kid because it's a uh, <laughs> It's related to the cash that you get and how much you get it. So you, you, you do work hard to receive a, a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, before, uh, in the last days of Ramadan, then um, the, there is this habit or ritual uh, and it became an obsession for, for women in houses, which is cleaning before every Eid. And it's, uh, it's a very thorough and, and, and deep cleaning for the houses. <laughs> Uh, it does this continue for a couple of days before the Eid, so that during Eid, then the house really is well, uh, is you know, like it's ready to receive visitors from outside and guests. And uh, the other thing is also the uh, prayers of Eid, where uh, where children really put the best of their clothes. Uh, the mark that's why the markets before Eid gets really, really busy. crowded and busy, and uh, and uh, it's very. Imp you know, like difficult for people to move and drive from one location to the other because everybody is shopping because Eid is a time where people come and wear, you know, like the new clothes. And during the, pray the prayers of Eid, that's one of the, you know, like uh, highlights of the Eid because everybody goes there. That's when they actually start greeting each other, uh, start the celebration of Eid, um, meet the neighbors, and they usually designate the biggest uh, mosque in the neighborhood for that, uh, for that prayer. And then people come back, <clears throat> and then the Eid, uh, you know, like meal is one of the, you know, like things that you will work for very many hours to prepare. Wow. And then the first day of Eid is known to be for the family and relatives, and the second day for going out and spending time yeah, outside a good time. exactly and the third day is also the same like you go and you spend time with the kids outside playing yeah. outside and all of this um and then one thing is again like the fireworks during Eid, very uh well known uh, activity for the kids uh the board games outside you see kids playing outside um neighbors they come and um you know like it's, Similar to the Gergian, but during the Eid, also like kids move from one house to the other looking for idea okay. in the same neighborhood. Nice. It's, it's such a nice way to, uh, you know, like to support and to celebrate together as a, as a you know, like uh, as a society. That, that's very interesting. So, I mean, what about, let's see, how is Lucy doing so far? So we're doing good over here. Our ghee is now melted and our cinnamon has started to release all of its flavors. I think mm -hmm. maybe you can smell it in the studio now. Yeah. So I'm now going to add in our evaporated milk. Okay. Who's going to come in like this? Mm -hmm. Over here, I have some sugar that I'm also going to add in. So that's going to melt in to, to make the, the sauce. And then I'm also going to add, and I need my measuring spoon, my cup, sorry. Okay. I'm also gonna add two and a half cups of milk. This is actually goat's milk. I like using it as an alternative. And the the ghee and the milk are both local today. All right. So Lucy, everything has to be measured correctly or you could do it like approximately. <laughs> Honestly, when you're cooking at home, make it with love. You know, a little, little extra of this, a little less of that. <laughs> make because you're going to be tasting yeah, as you're going. We don't, so. we, don't want to, we don't want to make it complicated, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yep, yep. Like, there's always a, you know, if, especially if you're making something like this, like, we're not going to be putting it in the oven, so we can be a little bit more casual. Mm -hmm. I think this kind of recipe is something that's great to make with kids. It's very simple. It's Perfect. very safe. Um, aside from when I chop up the bread in a little bit, it's a, a very easy recipe for young children to Perfect. make as well, and a lot of fun. This is interesting. So let's touch Amel about sweet. What people name and eat as a sweet? Um, th there is a, a dish that's called Binta Sahn, the daughter of the uh, of the <laughs> of the dish. <laughs> and what is that? Uh, so it's a layers of uh, dough put together. Okay. And then at the end, uh, you see it like you know, like on the top of each other, and you put honey on them. Mm. 
Oh, that should be probably because it's some day you should pre prepare this uh, sweet. Yeah, I'd love to give it a try and I'd love to try some of the other dishes that you mentioned earlier as well. Perfect. But now is the perfect time for us to take a break. We'll be back soon. And welcome back to Cultural Flavors, our Ramadan edition. So today I'm making a feta bilaban, which is a Yemeni dish, and we have our Yemeni guest with us today. So Amal, I want to ask you, how's your experience in Kuwait during the holy month of Ramadan? I love it. Um, Ramadan is, in Kuwait is uh, is very very nice. I love the diwanias and gabgat. Right. I feel like during the gabgat, <laughs> women do dress up in a style of uh, you know. A thousand night and night, mm -hmm. uh, very you know like <laughs> classy and stylish and chic. Uh, so I love that. It Wonderful. feels like you're in a movie. And uh, one thing that I like also in Kuwait is the generosity of the people in Kuwait. Mm -hmm. So um, it happens that each time I go home from work, uh, I pass through some houses on the way, and I see them distributing packages of food to whoever passes and whoever comes through the, uh, towards them. Exactly. And this is something I have never seen before anywhere. So I think that reflects how you know, caring and generous the people of Kuwait are. And it reflects also the spirituality of the month and the, and the, and the soul of Ramadan, right. which is about looking after each other mm -hmm. and you know, like assisting those in need. And I think it creates a beautiful sense of equality as well because the distribution isn't for anyone in particular, it's for everyone. Exactly. So whether it's uh, someone from a different faith that's you know on their way home like during the time of breaking the fast, they'll still receive a beautiful little gift and it's normally water, laban, dates. Exactly. And I, I think it's wonderful, like especially like if you're running late and you're like looking and like, we don't want to speed when we're fasting. Exactly. We have to play it safe, especially when we've been fasting for many hours. Perfect. So you mentioned the generosity of QA. So I have a question which is, have you ever broken your fast in a Kuwaiti household? And my lead on question, what was your favorite dish? Uh, breaking my fast, I haven't experienced that, but I did have dinner uh, during Rabgaz uh, with Kuwaitis and non-Kuwaitis together. And, and I like that spirit and I like the experience. I think it's one of the highlights of the month in Kuwait. Everybody should try it. Yeah. Uh, and my favorite dish is majboos. Majboos. Oh, classic. <laughs> <laughs> classic word. So what about sweet? Have you tried, uh, for example, al or... Yes, some yes. Also al I love it. All right, yes. that's good. Have you tried the haris or jurish? We have, we have uh, haris and garish in Yemen, similar recipes. So that's not new to me as well. Interesting. Yeah, and zarabiya as well. All right. Yeah, it's also something... Uh, I'm familiar with. This is very interesting. So what about, do you have any particular places that you would like to visit in the holy month of Ramadan? Suq uh, al-Mubarakiyah, because I feel like it's very traditional right. and uh, during Ramadan, um, I, I, can, I can really feel like it is something um, Kuwaiti. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like you can find everything there, all of the needs that you need from the house. Um, and I feel like it's, since it's very historical, uh, it does have uh, a smell and, uh, you know, like a taste, uh, whatever you go there. I feel like I'm really in Kuwait. All right. Mm. So let's see how is Lucy doing, because I believe <laughs> you are really would like to try what Lucy is going to make. So we'll see it. how is everything okay. going. So over here is all good. Our uh, main sauce that's going to go on top is nicely warming up. I don't want to heat it too fast 
I don't want it to bubble over. I want it to heat gently so we're not like burning the sugars inside. Mm -hmm. So that's in a nice gentle heat. Perfect. And then the base of our dish, I'm going to take out from the oven now. So I've been cooking and toasting our bread, mm -hmm. which is now beautifully toasted. This is going to be the base of our dish. Right. So this is a traditional Yemeni bread uh, called khubz tawa. Uh, so the two components, like I mentioned, a very simple dish, great for kids. I cut this up. You could have kids tearing it if you yeah. don't want them using knives. Uh, the base of the dish goes into the bowl and then the sauce goes on top. So we're going to come back to that in a minute. But I think we've got another question for Amal first, yeah. uh, which is uh, during the month of Ramadan, do you follow any particular diets or try and keep a certain lifestyle to be a little bit more healthy? and? Well, diet of Ramadan is very challenging. <laughs> <laughs> For everybody, probably. Exactly, because you're fasting the entire day and then yeah. here it comes, the food, and then you're craving everything. Exactly. And then sweets, uh, you know, like you have so many sweets in, uh, that's very particular to Ramadan. So how can you stop yourself? Exactly. Uh, but uh, my husband and I, we tried really to, <clears throat> to behave and try to make ourselves a bit disciplined. Uh, so we start with, uh, with dates and uh, yogurt, salty mm -hmm. yogurt. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we take some soup and, gr and green uh, salad. Uh, sometimes we put also some sambusa on uh, on it uh, next to it as well. And then we stop food there. And then we give it a break for a couple of hours. And then we have our main dish. Right. And that's it. Halas. Until oh. the next day. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So, let's see. Are you ready to serve? Because we are yeah. almost hungry, I think. Yeah, absolutely. So let me just grab my serving dishes. Okay. And I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit. Yeah, this is looking beautiful. All right. The cinnamon smells lovely. That's, it is. Yeah. smells really good. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a nice handful of our very now nice and toasted Hobbs Tower. I'm going to put this in the base of our dishes. Okay. So we're going to come back and finish this dish after a short break. Haris and Yiddish are one of the most popular dishes during Ramadan. We come to how they're made. So they are made using these pots or depending on the quantity that you would use, you'd either use these or these. The conical shape of it helps the cook beat the, gra uh, the wheat grains to get the consistency needed for Haris and Yiddish. take cooks hours to cook but now with technology and the different utensils available they can do it in much less time which helps during Ramadan. you've enjoyed Ramadan prepping with us and we wish you a happy Ramadan. And we're back, dear viewers, talking about the Republic of Yemen. So before we go deep into that, Emma, let's see how is Lucy doing. 
So we're doing great over here. I'm just about to serve up our feta bill leban.、Mm -hmm. So I have my toasted hubs. Tower in the bowls.、Okay. I'm just going to give this. It's a crunchy, huh? This is crunchy, and once I add in the liquid, the crunchy bread is going to absorb all of the liquid, and it's going to become. It's like I, I imagine a little bit like a cereal,、mm. um, but、oh, it's nice. so rich in flavor. It smells beautiful. It is, and it's nice and warm as I pour it over. Okay. So I'm going to give you both a nice bowl. Perfect. And I think Amal, you have a tip to make this. A little healthier, right? So Emma, this is for you. Yeah, thank you very much.、Mm -hmm. uh, my mom used to put、uh, banana and instead of also the uh, sugar, uh, some uh, honey. Okay. That's oh, for, beautiful. For the healthy option. I love that because especially like、thank、honey,、you. honey has such slow releasing sugars. So you're gonna get that, especially when you're fasting. You're gonna get the nice slow sugar release instead of the sugar rush. Yes, I'm yes, definitely yes. gonna try that at home with the banana and honey. It's really, really good. So Amel, I'm really concerned to to know、uh, people in Yemen who drink. Do they drink more coffee or tea?、Uh, it's it's.、Um, Since you have Yemen had a lot of kinds of beans. Yeah. Well, the the funny fact is that even though that we have we are we have been famous of、uh, of coffee, we only、uh, drink the. Coffee leaf or the、um, the cover of the coffee. So there are two layers that's covering the coffee bean, and、uh, we often don't use the bean itself, but you, we use the second layer of the coffee, and that's what's roasted and then、um, made into powder. And that's why the Yemeni coffee it's、um, it's brownish. It's a little bit darker than the coffee that we have, the Arabic coffee that we have here in Kuwait. Okay. And lighter than the black coffee that we have with the beans,、okay. and it's often mixed with the ginger. And this is one of the things that we have、uh, the iftar time, so we eat it with、uh, with dates. And some people like to put some、um, milk、uh, with it,、mm -hmm. together with some nuts、mm -hmm. and sesame. Wow. So I have a question: If you're using a, a different part of the plant than the bean itself, does it actually have a different flavor?、Mm. Uh, it's a little bit lighter. Um, so you don't feel like you're drinking like coffee, and I think it also、uh, contains less, less of caffeine, so it doesn't really affect,、um, you, you know, like、uh, the the time you sleep or the the the, the way that you、um, operate.、Uh, but it is like、uh, something that people drink most of the time, especially in the afternoon, and、uh, and then second comes tea. Tea. Yeah. And do you, do you have, do you produce the tea over there in Yemen? No, we don't have tea. No, we don't have no, tea. Okay.、Yeah. So, what about the most significant dish that, if you would like to give an advice to our dear viewers to try、uh, Yemeni's cuisine, which one do you recommend for them?、Uh, I would say. Can I say two? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. All right. So, do you say would, two? I would recommend the seafood.、Uh, so, I would say.、Um, Uh, shrimp harada,、mm -hmm. um, and the, and the harada is the hot pot that we cook uh, with, um, and the second one is、uh, the fish in the oven. Wow,、yeah. amazing! And you mentioned it's done in a special pot. Is that a, a natural clay pot? Yes, it is.、Yeah. Is that because it also releases minerals into the dish as it's cooking、yes. in the natural clay? Yes, and it does influence the taste.、Mm -hmm. um, uh, so you feel like somehow it's、um, somehow it's smoked. And uh, yeah, oh, interesting. And so, do you cook it over a fire, or is it something you cook in the oven? Oven fire, yeah. Oh wow, that's fascinating. What about this time to taste what does he made? Yes. All right, I'm actually gonna try. <laughs> so, it it smells really good, and I think、uh, Lucy, what Emma just mentioned, it's a good option that people could use honey. Absolutely. Or fruits with that, right? I'm gonna be trying that myself.、Mm. It tastes good. What do you think? Very tasty. Right? I like it.、Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very good. I have a try myself. Perfect. So, Emma, do you have any last advices to our dear viewers? So, please go ahead. I would say Ramadan Karim to everybody,、um, and、uh, Ramadan is some is a, is a time in the year that we are waiting、uh, for every year,、mm -hmm. and that's I think time for us to.、Um, Go back, reflect, and and remember those、uh, that we could assist and help. And、um, I would like to highlight that today we have over one hundred 
14 million displaced persons around the world. Uh, so let's not forget them from our prayers and our good deeds. Very good. So thank you so much for being with us. Such a lovely talk and conversation, as well as I would like to thank Lucy for making this really delicious dish. My pleasure. Palafia to both of you. Thank you. So dear viewers, we're going to see you tomorrow with different guests as well as talking about different country. Until then, be safe.